Welcome to Melt University. This series will help you build your brand, inform you on a variety of career paths, and introduce you to top executives in sports and marketing. Now, here's your host, the president and CEO of Melt, one of the largest independent sports and event marketing agencies in the country, Vince Thompson. Welcome back, students. Virtual Melt University. We are rolling headlong into the fall. Hopefully you're on campus, in your dorm, or in your apartment, or and hopefully uh, you're doing some type of live or Zoom or virtual hybrid classes. And even more hopefully, we're getting ready for some college football. And today's guest, my really dear friend, Corey Z. Moss, I just remembered that. It's not in my talking points, but I, for some reason, I, I'm not sure what Z means, but I just like saying it that way. And uh, uh, But he is probably the world's foremost expert in the licensing business, the licensing and royalty business, that T-shirt or that sweatshirt you buy on campus with the Alabama or Auburn logo or whoever it is. Um, he's been very instrumental in that industry uh, for many, many years. He and I share um, a longtime mentor, the creator and the pioneer of the collegiate licensing business, uh, Coach Bill Battle. Um CLC and collegiate license of business. And we could talk about coach battle throughout this whole uh, process, but uh, been with uh, CLC since 1995. It's amazing. Uh, 25 years as uh, I've you know, witnessed his personal professional growth, um, the evolution of the business, the evolution of CLC and IMG and the marketplace and all that. And obviously, you know, it's going to we'll continue to evolve again. Collegiate Licensing Corporation uh, represents more than 700 colleges and universities, conferences, bowls, NCAA, Heisman, college football playoff, anything with that trademark that you buy, apparel, hats, and those types of things. Um, Corey and his massive team, um, they, 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 they touch it. And, uh, been, and we've been friends forever for many, many years. The Sports Business Journal, power player leaders behind the scenes in college sports, he and I shared – uh, that list uh, together, just a dear friend, Atlanta Business Chronicle, up and comer, forty under forty, uh, amazing, amazing family. Just you know, just a dear friend. And Corey, welcome to Virtual Melt University. Well, thank you for having me. And the Z stands for Zach. <laughs> I, I love. Well, we've got two Zachs on the line today, and That's so. Right. Uh, but you know, I never had asked um, you know you that. So, but I like saying it somehow it just flows like Corey Z Moss and. Uh, <laughs> kind of flows really well. But, uh, you know, you have participated in um, our uh, program before and have always yeah. been very helpful and contributing. And so so that now we're reaching so many more, you know, people and students and kids and, and you know, going through this, it's going to be a you know very tough job market for entry level is already tough. It's going to be even tougher now with, you know, in a COVID environment, more sure. people going for fewer jobs. Um, I think today could be, you know, really, really illuminating uh, from explaining to our kids um, the entire industry of licensing and how, how it actually works. And we may even have some kids who are trying to maybe start something or a business sure. or something where they want some collegiate license logos. But before we sort of dive into those nuts and bolts, we really kind of always like to take it back to when you were in college uh, and where your original passion or your original impetus or what your passion was that sort of led you into this uh, career that, you, that where you sit today. Yeah, well, I, I, I would say I, I stumbled on this 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 twenty five year career at uh, at CLC. You know, when I was when I was graduating or headed towards graduation in in college, obviously I was going to the career center back then and and you know signing up for you know, any and every interview. I didn't really care the company because um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to get some experience in the interview, whether I got the job or not. I just I just signed up for interviews. So I was just going to classes or, or doing interviews mm -hmm. pretty much my entire, I would say, junior year of, of college. And when I first, by the time I graduated, I landed a job with uh, Baxter Healthcare mm -hmm. um, doing pharmaceutical and uh, respiratory equipment sales. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was a great job. You know, I got got out 
and, uh, you know, lived out on the West Coast and then back on the East Coast and and then had a had a territory and had done that for three years and had done really well and got gotten on a commission plan um, at an early age. So I was I was making some some decent money, but I really didn't like the the kind of hardcore excuse me, kind of sales mm-hmm. grind of, of that job. And so I really just started, I didn't know what I wanted to do after that. And I'd been there for three years and I really didn't want to, I know I didn't want to do that, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So, mm-hmm. But you just um, knew there wasn't any kind of a drive or a passion. Yeah, I definitely, did not have, I definitely did not have the passion. And that, and that bothered me for, for years, right. even though I, I did the job well. I mean, I was, mm-hmm. I was rookie of the year there, um, was always in the, in the top of sales, but I just, <clears throat> I just didn't have the passion for it. And so at that time, I just, I was living in Connecticut and I was, um, you know, I was, it was snowing every Wednesday. Right, right, right. <laughs> my, I would go visit my dad in, in, uh, in Atlanta, um, on Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it was always, sunny and about right. 70, 75 degrees. And we Nothing like a play. Thanksgiving in Atlanta with the yeah. football and everything. We go back, we play golf and then I head back to the, to the snow and I just said, so I don't, don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm just going to start looking at places I want to live. And so started sending a lot of, a lot of resumes and letters to companies in Atlanta, got a call back from CLC. And, uh, and, and at that time, you know, I, I, you know, they were, they happened to have a position open, mm-hmm. but they didn't really know if I would fit because I was at the time. And this is a, this is one of the key points I wanted to make is at the time, two, three years out of college, I was I was making on commission and sales. I was probably making fifty to sixty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And so the position that and that's, a hell of a, that's, a, that's a hell of a living back then, too. I mean, still back is, then, but, <laughs> that's yeah. A, you're right. That's a, yeah. Well, two, three years out of school. That's yeah. A, you had sixty thousand, and you that was a milestone. Fifty, sixty thousand. Yeah. You're like, man, I've got more money <laughs> I've ever seen. So this this job that they had, even though I had never interviewed for it, was making about twenty five. Right. And so I, you know, I, I really again was trying to look for something I was passionate about. Mm-hmm. I, I asked my dad. You know, I said, "Hey, my dad was AD at Georgia State at the time." Mm-hmm. I, I did said, not. I did not realize that. Yeah, yeah. So you grew up in a college athletic background, though, right? I did. My my dad was an AD for forty okay. years. Was is in the NACDA Hall of Fame and everything. But I never wanted to. Pursue but you that. had never thought about pursuing that career. Never gave it one iota. I never, will be dang. Never thought about it. Didn't even let alone even try it. I never even thought about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not sure why, because I grew up in you know gyms, yeah, and, sure, and on football fields and stuff like that. And so I was talking to him. I said, Hey, I got this call back from, you know, CLC. Do you know anything about him? And back then, ADs didn't know much about their licensing pro. He's like, right. I think they, uh, Well, you, I think you they, forget it that these modern day ADs and these $100 million athletic departments, it hasn't always been that way. No, I mean, now they know every dollar that's coming in from any revenue source right, right, they possibly right. can. And he said, I think they, he's like, I don't really know. I think they, um, you know, I like police officers and they go and, you know, go around the stores <laughs> and, and make sure stuff isn't counterfeit. And I said, Dad, I'm, I mean, I wasn't, again, I wasn't trying to big time it, but I said, Dad, I'm in talking with doctors and, and chief financial officers at hospitals. Right. Like, I'm going to go and be a police officer. It's like, right, right, right. and he said, I, I don't know. You, you probably should just, just take the interview. And so I did. And I met with Pat. Um, who's the the son of the founder, Bill Battle, met with uh-huh. Pat. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we ended up just talking for about three hours. I actually got bumped from a flight. I was hard. It was a, it was, I was trying to get an interview and nothing really worked out. And I got bumped from a flight and got a free ticket. And uh-huh. I said, you know what? I'm going to take that free ticket and fly to Atlanta on my dime and go, go get this interview. Cause I want to see what this company's about. Um, cause it was one of the first companies that actually called, called me back. So mm-hmm. I ended up going in and meeting with Pat. We talked for, for hours just about, you know, mm-hmm. it was an enforcement company, but he wanted to take it, um, to, to become a marketing company. And so 
I became real interested. He started talking about everything they were doing from the retail side of things and promotions to um, video games they were getting involved in and, and all of that. And so, um, you know, he said, hey, I'm really interested in you coming back and talking. Why don't you come back tomorrow? And I want to want you to talk to my dad. And mm-hmm. so I came back the next day, talked to Bill. And, um, you know, we had a we sat and talked for about another hour. And uh, of course, Bill Battle, if people don't know, Coach Battle played football at Alabama for Bear Bryant, coach of Tennessee, started the company. But he's also like, like, you know, uh, 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 General MacArthur walking into the room. I mean, he's oh, a tall, God. stately, pleasant, <laughs> present, giant presence, but gentle, uh, you know, guy. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, so so you so the next day you come back and talk to the founder. I do. I do. And he was, he was all of that. He looked like he could have, he, and you know, he was a two-way player at Alabama played, oh, yeah. uh, played tight end and defensive end. So he looked like he could take a few people out even back in the night. Yeah, I, I think he still can now, to be honest. With you. <laughs> no, no doubt. So we had a good talk and, you know, they were ready to offer me the job, but Bill said, he said, look, you know, all I got is, you know, this job is twenty five thousand. You're up there making fifty, sixty thousand dollars. That's half of what you're making now. Like you, you really want to do this? And I said, look, Bill. I said, I, I see where you guys are going. I, I grew up around this space. I think I could, I would really enjoy it. Um, had he, he said, I, had he known your father at all? Yeah, he did. He did. He had known my father, but you know, I you I know you don't know my father, but my my dad didn't even write me a recommendation letter for this job. Like he, my dad is tough. Like he's yeah. like until you, he's like you, you, you wow, wow, <laughs> yeah. So I had to I had to convince Pat, convince Bill, and then my dad would tell him about me. He was like, you got to get there first, and then if it looks like you're gonna get it, then I'll let him know. I put my name on you. My dad doesn't put his name on many things, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> so. Um, so Bill said to me, and I'll never forget it. He said, look, I know you say you'll take this job. He's like, but when you get down here and you go to that, your mailbox and you get that electric bill and you can't pay it, what are you going to do? And (laughs) and I started laughing. I said, wow, you really are serious about this $25,000, aren't you? And he said, yes, I am. I said, well, I said, Bill, don't, don't worry about that. I got it. Let me let me worry. Let me worry about that. You don't worry about that. I'll mm-hmm. I'll head back. If you're ready to offer me this job, I'll head back and I'll I'll load and pack myself up in a U-Haul and I'll I'll head on down. And and sure enough, um he said, All right, well, I want you to talk to the guy that you're gonna report to, make sure everything is okay there. And if that works out, um, you know, we will we'll welcome you. And so mm-hmm. long story short. I've been with the company 25 years later. And That's amazing. To figure out how to pay that electric bill. I, yeah, I was about to say, but you know what? It doesn't, I mean, because and, and, Bill Battle is one of a kind. And, you know, he still writes thank you notes, yeah. brutally honest as the day is long. And, and obviously, like I said, um, you know, he's, he's, he's one of the, he's one of the true pioneers, but he's also one of the, one of the true gentlemen. So, you know, I mean, literally working with, you know, a pioneer. I mean, how cool is that? Just, you know, to, I mean, uh-huh. you know, we talk about, you know, he's a longtime mentor of mine, longtime mentor yeah. uh, of you and that. But I had never really heard that story. So, you know, because one thing that comes out of our interviews is that, you know, your path's going to be your path. You may you may uh-huh. go to college and have a have one idea and a, a set of ideas about things, but the good Lord's going to throw you some curveballs. Uh, he has a wicked sense of humor. But you you got to go with your path. Uh, you're going to get thrown off that saddle. Uh, you're going to get told yeah. uh, no a million times and all that. But it's it's a fascinating path to to, to where you are now. So, so well, it, you know, it also signifies. And I, the reason I tell that story is just because you know it's going to take some some sacrifice. It's going to take some mm-hmm. risk. I thought I would do well. I I liked where they were going. So that I I kind of interviewed them, and I. I, I mean, Bingo. frankly, I took the risk. That's a fifty percent pay cut I was headed towards, and I just said, "Where I'm headed now is not going to be pretty because I don't like what I'm doing. I know I can't keep doing right. this. I'm not going to be successful, but this I can. And and if I gotta if I gotta start from from scratch, you know, then I mm-hmm. then I'll do that. So I think mm-hmm. I think that's important. And you never know, like you said, where it's gonna, what path is gonna lead you. And you know, Corey, 
and, and this is kind of one of my soapboxes, and we, and we talk to our kids and our students a lot about this, though, is that, is that a lot of, a lot of the today's students have an instant set of expectations about what's going to happen and where their job's going to be and, you know, all those types of things. And, you know, you see a Mark Zuckerberg, and he's kind of a unicorn, but it just doesn't happen that way. I mean, you gotta, you're going to have to grind. And I always say, hey, look, just stay in a job at least a year. And like in any relationship, you're really not going to know how this thing's going to go in three months. And you're not going to be the CEO in three months. You're not like there's frustrating times right out of the right out of gates, but you got to push through it. And and it takes and you are going to to be successful. I don't care what it is. You're going to have to bust your tail. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That you, I mean, you're spot on that. So, Corey, uh, our students may not really realize this, but uh, chances are they're at a school, 80, 90 percent chance that they're at a school that that uh, that the Collegiate Licensing Corporation touches in some format and they and the hats and the shirts and sweatshirts and things that they buy um, in the store, you've got your fingerprints on that in some. And, and what and, and, and students, what you, what you may realize is next time you go and buy um, a shirt, you see this tag on it and it's got this embossed emblem, looks like kind of um, hieroglyphics or something like that. That's the official stamp that lets you know it's officially approved and a licensed product of the university and, 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 and all of that. So, there are opportunities all around, and obviously, um, with you know social media and digital and the internet, the licenses business exploded, video games and all that. Right. But sort of give them a one-on-one -on -one about really this. I'm always fascinated because I'm not sure I understand it completely right. myself sometimes. But but in its base form, what's a one-on-one on license? Yeah. So I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll walk you backwards from the process because that's probably the best way to explain it. So you walk, so for the, the, uh, the students, you know, you walk into your bookstore or, you know, any local uh, mom and pop store mm -hmm. or even your Dick Sporting Goods and you walk in and you see mm -hmm. a, a t-shirt with your school's marks on it. That t-shirt may mm -hmm. sell for, you may have to, you would have to pay, say, $15 for that T-shirt. The company mm -hmm. that actually produced that shirt that made it, put the logo on it, got the blank, put the, you know, kind of screen printed or embroidered that logo on it. And that's, the, that's called the manufacturer, yeah. right? So that's the manufacturer. We also call them licensees because now they're a they're fit. Licensees. So mm -hmm. that manufacturer has sold that $15 T-shirt that you just bought to that particular retailer for about seven dollars so so it's usually about 50 percent for cent markup so let's just say it's a let's for just easy of numbers sake so a 20 dollar t-shirt or sweatshirt has been sold to that retailer by the manufacturer for ten dollars of that ten dollars a a percent of that ten dollars goes back to the school so let's say it's 15 15 percent of that ten dollars that that manufacturer sold that shirt to that retailer, and that mm -hmm. retailer sold it for twenty, so the retailer is mm -hmm. making ten dollars off of that product. Of that ten dollars, a dollar fifty, fifteen percent, goes back to the school for the use of their logo. Now we're the company that is behind that that helps facilitate the process of that company getting approved to be able to put a logo on that shirt. They submit that artwork to us. They have a contract and agreement that says what they need to pay, when they need to pay it, how it needs to be paid. And then they submit that artwork to it. We process that on to the school. We review it, say it looks good. The school then takes a look at it and says, we're good with it. And that's how the, the process started. And so uh, of that wow. dollar and 50 cents that we collected on behalf of the school for all the services that we provide, everything from from administration to royalty accounting, um, to marketing, mm -hmm. um, to our account management, everything that we do on behalf of that school, our legal work, for of that dollar and 50 cents, we take a portion of that to send a, a huge lion's share of it back to the school. And where it typically goes is to either general scholarship funds, athletic scholarship funds, or however they may have earmarked the dollar. So every time somebody walks in, and buys a $20 item, 
you can know that there's probably about a dollar fifty, two dollars that's going back to the school to support whatever programs they have, whether it's scholarships, other funds, whatever it may be. And we're the company behind just facilitating that. We're also mm-hmm. helping the retailers sell more of that. So we're working with the bookstore on on marketing programs and promotions to really get the attention and engage consumers, whether that's on social media Mm -hmm. or whether that's in store or whether that's through advertising, we're trying to create programs that keep um, students, fans, alumni Mm -hmm. engaged and interested in, in buying licensed product. And we're also working with companies on designs or searching out new companies. I mean, we, we, we have what we call, we've licensed, just about every company, we call it from the cradle to the grave, from onesies mm-hmm. and you know pacifiers all the way to caskets and urns and everything in between. Mm-hmm. But there are things here mm-hmm. and there that we are seeking out are companies or brands that we like to bring into college that we're doing a lot of work on behalf of, of all the institutions that we, that we represent. So that's kind of a, a walk backwards, but we're the administrator, mm-hmm. the manager, the marketer of the school's uh, product and their licensees. I bet you didn't think six months ago that you would have 10,000 mask manufacturers. <laughs> Absolutely. And we got a ton. And, and, you know, well, they, and you know, by the way, you don't choose every, you don't choose, you don't choose everybody, right? Like, no. I mean, like you got to, we don't, there's a, it's a quality. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot just because of the schools that we represent. Obviously we represent, Big ones. We have Michigan, North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, um, schools alike. But so there's a lot about who we represent. So companies that are creating new ideas are coming to us and saying, hey, this is where we want to start. So there's some attraction there. So when this started, mm-hmm. you know, when mass started coming out, everybody came to us. We got a bunch of companies, but those masks are keeping some companies afloat. They've changed everything. That That's doing. amazing. That's right. right just to maximize this opportunity, just to stay afloat through these tough economic times. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's, we had a, we did a, we did a meltdown um, the podcast, a video cast mm-hmm. uh, with mayor Ron Anders of Auburn and and his, his family, you know, book, Auburn, Anders bookstore for many, many years. Yes. And yeah. He just talked about the, the, the sheer uh, magnitude of the financial impact in the communities. Oh, those, yeah. We call them six Saturdays in the fall because it's about twenty percent of everybody's everybody's budget revenue, um, and that's why you know even at, at some point, um, you know we even some college football is going to be better than others. Because my theory is that people are still going to ride down to Auburn just to be there and experience just being there, even if they can't get in the stadium. And, and so, could right. be some opportunities there. But 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 I want to uh, you know the 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 the, the founding. I want to talk about the founding of CLC, and then I got a I got a big loaded hot potato to throw at you. But okay. but 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 this fascinating story of Coach Bill Battle <laughs> to find to find being the founder of the collegiate licensing organization. And I know this is a really long story, but but you know he had coached the University of Tennessee, which was blasphemous because you know he would play football for Bear Bryant, and then he. Leaves the University of Tennessee. He's living in Selma, working for an Alabama alumni. I remember that, by the way. Yeah, I was in window, Selma, window company. Right, late. Yeah, well, you know, uh, a window company. And as as and then and Bear Bryant was in the throes of breaking the coaching record of three fifteen of Amos Alonzo Stag, yeah. but there was no licensing industry or control of Coach Bryant's face or the Alabama uh, logo. There was no industry, correct? So, right. so, so, what happened? So, so, Bill, as you said, he he goes to coach at Tennessee. Has one of the winningest records at Tennessee, but he just couldn't. He didn't. Uh, he just couldn't beat Alabama, and so they they didn't like right. an Alabama boy not being able to beat his alma mater. So, uh, of course, nobody in the planet beat Coach Bryant, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there, right? That's right. That's right. And and so they ran him out of town. You, you got to get him to tell you that story. That's funny. Um, yeah, they have <laughs> U-Hauls packed up and all kinds. That's of right. So they, yeah. Uh, so he goes to this window tree window treatment company, and Coach Brian is on the board, and and one of his responsibility was, hey, make sure you get Coach Brian from the airport and bring him to the board meeting. So as he's talking to Coach Brian on the way to this board meeting, you know, he says, hey, Coach, you're getting well. The, actually, 
uh, Coach Bryant says to him, saying, I got all these people calling me, wanting me to do these different things. And, 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 you know, cause I'm about to break this record and, and I don't really want to do them. And I got this company that represents me and they kind of want me to do them. And, and Bill said, you know, why don't you let me represent you? And he said, well, all I want, you know, Coach Bryant said, all I want you to do is tell them no. So you can represent me, but all I want you to do is tell them no. And uh, wow. so then all these different opportunities come form on, you know, prints and portraits and product and all these other things and bills. So bills mm -hmm. representing coach Bryant. And every time they, they come to him, they want to use Alabama's marks and, and there's, he can't find out how you can get the rights to use Alabama marks. So he goes up on campus, runs into finest Gaston, who's the CFO at, at Alabama mm -hmm. and athletics. Mm -hmm. Now I just talked to him yesterday and Finest was was starting a licensing program at Alabama. And, and Bill said, mm -hmm. well, you're trying to get it up and going. I got all these things for Coach Bryant. Why don't I just help you do that and represent Alabama? And so that was kind of the impetus of it. Bill forms his company, represent Coach Bryant in Alabama. And then, you know, it turns into representing Ole Miss and all, the entire ACC at the time and just goes on and on. And in the process, but he so he built the model you described. Bill Battle actually built that model as well. Built that model, and he the biggest thing is he went and studied what the NFL was doing at the time and said, "Okay, I can do that for college," and and built it from you know one school at a time. You know we've been acquired over the years, we've merged. I mean to to now, mm -hmm. and again you, you talk about being able to to work and grow up around you know Bill Battle has just been a absolute dream because you yeah you know i got to see so much from from the beginning and uh you know there's not there's not anything that i do as as kind of the head of this company now that i don't always ask myself when it comes to something difficult what would bill do and it got me mm -hmm. in the right direction every time uh mm -hmm. so yeah he from the from the ground up and watching him him build it he uh he did it I, I, you know, like I said, you and I, we might have to have a separate podcast about <laughs> Coach Battle, but, but so, so wittingly or unwittingly, and we've talked to our students a lot, uh, and we've had guests on from all, you know, walks of life, you know, right. Alan Green at Auburn and Ross Bjork at Texas A&M, Greg McCarity at Georgia, and we've had them across the board, famous sports agents, but you're going to be at the epicenter of the name, image, and likeness. Uh, eye of the hurricane, whether you like it or not. Correct? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so from the perch you sit, because, you know, I'm a very passionate advocate for student athlete rights since I, you know, stepped on the campus of Auburn 40 years ago and know them really well. And I love student athletes. And I, you know, I, I'm more interested in the non-revenue and the endemic and, mm -hmm. and, and, and career development than I am the tours of the world, but obviously they get the most attention and money, but, 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 from where you sit, how is this? How is the the players? I mean, I don't, I don't even know if you've seen the recent Najee Harris just put uh, Najee Harris just put uh, this amazing uh, uh, personal branding Heisman video out yesterday. Which in the old days that would have been the function of the sports information department and all that. And so, not only are these players the most sophisticated uh, in the students and kids, sophisticated of any generation on the planet, they have the tools, they right. have the knowledge, um, and 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 it seems to be you know sort of uh, you know a, a recognition or aha uh -huh, that like you know hey, uh, and it's interesting, uh, Corey. I've talked to several ADs and several coaches and they said, you know, Hey, this is the first time ever that kids are saying, I'm really not concerned about what I can do for your brand. What can you do for my brand? Right. And it's influencing recruiting decisions as well. So from where you sit, right. not only is it going to have a big impact, but if you were the czar of all of this, where, where do you see this going? You know what? you you're absolutely right. The, the the students these days, the kids these days, the student athletes these days are extremely sophisticated and extremely savvy mm -hmm. about the opportunities that that are in front of them. And I, I just I just listen to them, uh, to be honest, to see where we might be able mm -hmm. to to fit in and help. Again, we're not in the 
in the business of we, we obviously represent institutions. So I'm coming in from that perspective. We represent the institutions. We want to be able to help our institutions and in however this landscape gets sorted out and shaped out and legislated and recommended, because I think there's that's still going to there's going to I think it's going to start in one place very soon. Obviously, it's supposed to to start this next mm -hmm. year. But I think there's going to be evolutions of wherever it starts. There's going to continue to be evolution. I, I totally agree with that. It's not it's not it's not going to wind up looking anything like it but 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 in your career your lifetime have you ever seen sort of a more complex subject no. matter in our industry no. than, than ever never i mean you got first amendment you got technology you got trademarks you got uh is bo nix at auburn uh can he post a picture of himself drinking a pepsi right. if coke is the is coke the sponsor and then if he does is he violating the sponsorship agreement with Auburn, or if he's not in an Auburn jersey, is he, you know, you know, what I mean, nothing like, more like, daunting in our, I mean, everything from that, in our in our tax life. Tax implications. I mean, there's 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 yeah. so much. But when we have talked to student athletes, you know, obviously the things that they see. I mean, there's there's few and far between. And I think you you have you know a top one two percent of student athletes that right. are going to have some right. big big opportunities. But there's going to there in my opinion, there's going to be these big ones and there's going to be these $20 ones too. And mm -hmm. that's across. But by the way, $20 is a lot of money. To <laughs> that's, get. that's why they're going to be. That's exactly why there are going to be some of those. And so mm -hmm. when, when we have talked with the student athletes, they want what they are interested in primarily is they don't want to go down. And, and, and this is what I've heard. They don't want to go down the street and take hours and hours to do commercials or autographs or go to that mm -hmm. local, you know, they're always talking about this local car dealership. And I don't think that's it because when we talk, I, it's not. When we talk to student athletes, it's like, look, I can, I, I know that there's video games, jerseys, trading cards, and I know what exists there. And it seems like that's easy for me to tap into and do. And the other easy part is my social media platform because you know, people know how to track and get to me there. And those are things that aren't going to take away from my class time and they're not going to take away time from my sport. I can navigate those two things. One, hopefully get some assistance from the school. Again, I know that's still to be determined, but hey, you know, the the people that they do trust are the people on campus. And I know right. Not gonna, right now the legislation or the recommendation is schools not being involved in that, but they do trust them for guidance and some assistance and help. So, hey, help me with these things that if I were ever to have an opportunity to do some things with schools, because right now they're saying that student athletes name, image and likeness can't be used in conjunction with school marks. So mm -hmm. that takes mm -hmm. some things off the table from a licensing standpoint. But if that ever evolved and it does, I think you know, the, the student athletes want the school to help them with those. And then let me do all this other stuff, whether I have a, a professional service helping me or whether I have my mom is helping me or my brother and sister help me, whatever it is, I can handle the other things that come along. So I think just in general, it really depends on kind of how this legislation and recommendations really are written and then how they ultimately evolve as to mm -hmm. kind of from from our specific world on the licensing side, you know, this will be additive to what we're doing. I don't think the student athletes from a licensing standpoint, product standpoint, are necessarily going to take, you know, this isn't going to be devaluing the licensing business, so to speak, because I think it will ultimately Not evolve. Yet. But, you know, we're just looking at ways. I mean, we're in the trademark licensing business every day, all day. And it's about you know, this infrastructure and systems and things that we might be able to help kind of solve this massive problem that I think is going to fall on primarily the, the compliance directors. Yeah, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that every day. You know, they're, they're going to have a very tough task of tracking up, tracking all this and keeping up with it and then ultimately disclosing um, what happens. And, and so, you know, we, as, as we've always been, you know, whether it's, from multimedia rights, whether it's licensing, whether it's ticketing, whether it's seating, you know, all those things, Vince, in our business have come about because a school was having a problem and they needed mm -hmm. an expert to help them do it. And so mm -hmm. if there's something in there that we feel like we can help the school do as it relates to this, again, 
we we know our partnership is on the on the school side, but if we can uh, if we can help, then we will. Well, and 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 like I said, we this is so fascinating because it's the complexities of this oh. thing are just are just and it's moving you know faster than the speed of light and and um, it's uh, coming. You know, no matter what. Yeah, and it's coming. And, I, and I, like I said, I mean, we all focus on Tua and Burra and Trevor and Justin Fields and all that. But, you know, there's, you know, there's a several hundred thousand amazing female student athletes who are just as dedicated to their sport and profession as, as, uh, as, 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 as uh, Trevor is. Right. And I think it is going to create a lot of opportunity. Um, you know, I always use the Auburn women's equestrian team as an example, but I, I, I really think long term, right. um, you know, because you're always going to have a you know a, a star system. There's always going to be stars, but I think long term, and I also think it's going to bring new money into college athletics because you know uh, whether it's a saddle company for um, you know uh, the equestrian team or female products or th- or things and sponsors and categories. But if you could use two hundred thousand amazing influencers to you know, to to promote empowerment and then push some products out, and they put money in their pocket. That's not a bad thing, you know, and so so I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a passion. And, and like I said, this has been so. So question, and I'm sure you may get this question from our students. So let's say a student comes up with a space age type uh-huh. keychain or something and yep. they want to put an Auburn or Alabama logo on it. What's the process? So. I think you go to clc.com. That's the first place you go. And, right. And then we have. A, so there is a, there's, there's a portal. So, right. so like if, so we have a, like if Vince, Vince and Zach said, okay, we've got this newest mask. Right. We, we submit our content. That's right. So you can go on there. There's a get license section. There's a ton of information there. And then there's actually a, a button on there that can take you through um, actually applying for a license. And so it's everything from, company marketing distribution plan credit references all of those things that wow, would be wow. required and then you know you kind of submit what you want to do and and then we take that we review it and give our thoughts and suggestions to the uh, the institution um, to the school and then they ultimately review it and say whether or not they want you um, as a license because as you can as you can imagine we got we got t-shirt companies out of the out of the wazoo so there's not too much there that right. you know can't be done currently by one of those existing companies so it takes a good idea a new product a new mm-hmm. opportunity a new distribution channel something like that to to get involved in the to kind of get through the process but um there's a ton of information there if anybody is because again there's some great ideas and and who would have thought yeah. some of the things that we've seen come through um, you know, recently, everything from you know virtual portraits to um, right, you know, to cut out fan cutouts in the stands and all that. Right. right. Well, okay, so you've seen thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of pictures of products. <laughs> out of all of them, what's the craziest one you've ever seen? God, I knew you were going to ask this. <laughs> <laughs> Because every time I used to go into your your office, I was so fascinated. Right. Like I'm like, what the hell is that? Yeah, I would I would <laughs> say the 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 urn was something that that caught me. <laughs> that, that I was like, wow. And then you and then you think about it, like you know the passion and love that people have for their yeah. their college. I and, and so you could see somebody saying, hey, I want my my casket lined in yeah in, uh, oh, yeah. in, in Auburn's. Uh, well, hey, by the way, I'll tell you a great Bill Battle story. Me and my son, Carter, were sitting, and I'll, I'll show you the photograph right before it happened. We're sitting on the field with Bill Battle before the kick six. Right. And, and somebody from Auburn dumped their ashes on the field. Uh, that. One of the greatest stories I, ever. I believe it. So I think that's one now. This is another one that I've seen. And I talked about the cradle to grave. Like we did license some some diapers. Now the logos were on the now the logos were on the outside, not the inside. <laughs> Cause I was gonna say, if you're an Alabama fan, you'd probably buy some licensed Auburn diapers <laughs> if there was an inner lining in there. And so this is this has been this has been amazing. So a yeah. couple of things in closing. Um um if somebody's reaching out to you for professional advice or personal advice or 
applies for a job because I, I like I said, I, I just I just love this business. It's such a nut and bolt business, but it's it's massive. Mm-hmm. Um, because everybody owns, you know, licensed, you know, merchandise. But but what are what are some things that get your attention if they track you down? I we always like to say, hey, what gets the great ones' attention? Like yeah. on a on an email or a LinkedIn or or if, what are you looking for in a potential employee? Because we tell all of our kids, hey, this is a every interaction you have with Corey Moss is an audition. Uh, you better bring the heat. You better have a you know you better have your story packaged because you've got thousands of kids that want to go to work for him. But what are things that yeah. get your attention and stand out? You know, I, I would say honestly, there's a couple of things. I think there's there's one that should always be stand out when you talk about bringing the bringing the heat in the and in the interview. Mm-hmm. You better have brought the heat in everything that you have touched along the way because you can get in you can you can get in front of me and that's not that's not hard to do. I'm not that big time. So you can you can get it. And we're and we we all we were all there Absolutely. one day. So we try to respond. Yeah. And and I mean you can get in front of me and I would say, but the one thing I'm gonna do, I, I don't care what you do, what you say in the interview. There's probably if you're trying to get into the biz this business, and I know you're gonna put mm-hmm. some references. I'm probably not calling your references. I'm gonna call bingo, bingo. other people that I know that have been around you, or have seen you, know about you, heard about you, and I'm gonna check what they say because they know me, they know what I'm expecting, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to those people that were looking at you from afar and see what you've been doing. Mm-hmm. And so how, mm-hmm. how were you acting and operating and how hard were you working when you thought nobody was looking? Um, so mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's always where I'm going to go is, is again, you're going to get in front of me. You might do a great job. You might give me some references, but I'm going to see where you work, where you've been. And I'm going to go talk to the people that I know I've been in this mm-hmm. business for 25 years. So I can find somebody that, that yep. was watching you when you weren't watching. So, you got to yep. be bringing the heat all the time. But then when yep. you are in front of me, for me, one of the biggest things is just the positive energy and attitude. I mean, Vince, you know me, you know how I am. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just just having that positive outlook, that energy right. that you can bring to something every day, all day, I think is important. Mm-hmm. And and I, I People pick up on that. They feed in. It's not something that you're going to say. It's not something you're going to do. It's something that they're just going to feel. And that's a that's a big thing Mm -hmm. um, for me. And then just, you know, I think millennials or the younger kids get a bad they get a bad rap, um, you know, and and Mm -hmm. on, on, you know, wanting things before they they're ready for them or before they've earned them or whether they're not hardworking or whatever it is. And so if if I'm one of those kids right now. And you know that there, there's that bad rap out there. Do you know what type of opportunity that is for you? You have a chance to go out, and if you right. bust your tail, you will really separate yourself from the the bad rap that that you all get, and will be right. really be able to stand out. So I think those are kind of the the three things: is what are you doing when nobody's watching? Are you are you? Yeah, that's when they say char- That's when they say char- true character yep. is built. Right? Yep. Well, who, yeah. Who who's who's gonna who's gonna um, say great things about you that you didn't put on your your reference list? Mm-hmm. What type of energy and positivity are you gonna bring to you know the mm-hmm. interview? And then you know, have you been working hard? Um, that's mm-hmm. no that that's that attitude and that attitude and energy has got to be conveyed in every form of communication. Yeah. That, that that you're interacting with with uh, with and i mean that's what attracts me that's, awesome. you know me Vince. that's what attract tracks me to you you always have it you always are yeah. upbeat looking yeah. at life as best as you possibly can and yeah i mean that's 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 what we do and and, and we're you know we're all going through some craziness together right yeah. now and and uh and and it's important now more than ever to truly truly stay Stay positive and, and energetic, but uh, yeah. this has been so enjoyable, and I know that you're going to have uh, a lot of great feedback right. uh, from uh, from our students and our listeners. And I knew we were going to have a good time with this <laughs> today, and and, uh, and 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 I knew that we could tell a lot of great stories. But I, I think we're going to have a lot of ahas right. going through kids' head when they hear like, "Wow, I didn't really, really ever realize mm-hmm. when I bought that shirt online or yeah. Dick Sporting Goods or something like that how it really." really came to life and came to uh, to fruition. But Corey Moss, uh, Executive VP, Managing Director of the Collegiate Licensing Corporation, uh, probably, you know, one of the world's foremost experts, not just in college, but 
um, you know, any in the licensing business is multi, multi billions and billions of dollars uh, for 25 years. Uh, he's been a leader in that. He's also a leader uh, with the, you know, with college athletics and obviously very knowledgeable from every corner of it with the NCAA football marketing committee, um, Hampton University, uh, you know, March of Dimes. He's very committed to cause. We didn't even get to unpack that a lot today, but, but, you know, we all, he and I'll share uh, how important it is to give back because we've all been blessed and sport business journal, power player and, and, you know, all that, but just to, just to, just to, as you can tell, just a warm, great, generous human being, family man. And, um, you know, and that's how, that's how you build and maintain relationships. But, uh, Corey, we really appreciate you joining right. a virtual melt university today. And, you know, thank you for everything you're doing for the kids. And, and hopefully we're all going to be back out in uh, Auburn and that's uh, right. out, everywhere else buying our, buying our shirts and our caps and cheering our team on hopefully sooner than later. Yeah, well, thank you for, for asking me to to do this. I really appreciate it. And it was, it was fun. I knew it would. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you, you knew you and I were going to cut off a little right. bit. Well, uh, Corey, thank you so much. And uh, students, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Vince. Hope you enjoyed today's virtual class. We'll be back soon with another edition of Melt University 2020.